Department is fully informed of our debate, our concerns and our commitment to the vulnerable people of the Mediterranean. Thank you. We now move to general questions. Question one, Joanne Lamont. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to assess and sustain the levels of support staff in schools. Minister Alistair Allen. This is a matter for education authorities, as the employment of teachers and support staff, along with recruitment practices, are ultimately a matter for individual local authorities who have a statutory duty for education expenditure and are responsible for providing a complement of staff which meets the needs of each of their schools and their pupils in light of the resources available. Joanne Lamont. Uh, thank you. I'm sure the Minister appreciates that access to education is about more than teachers, books and buildings. And will he acknowledge the importance of learning support, behaviour support, classroom assistance, personal assistance, admin staff, attendance staff, all of those support staff who are ensuring that children can have a real opportunity to learn and to allow teachers to focus on their teaching? And while I hear what the Minister says about the local authority's responsibility, will he share my concern of anecdotal evidence that there are now fewer support staff with heavier burdens, with a the consequence then for real equal, equality of opportunity within our schools? And will he commit to at least taking a proper view of what is happening around support staff and work with local authorities to ensure those supports are there so that all of our children can learn to their potential? Minister. Well, the government, of course, does have uh, that commitment to ensuring that uh, our schools are staffed and staffed well. And, of course, that lies behind some of the stances uh, that the government has taken around the numbers of teaching staff uh, across Scotland. Uh, in terms of support staff, also, we recognise uh, the importance of support staff, not least uh, for those with uh, uh, additional needs uh, and additional learning needs. Uh, and in, in the face of um, the, the statistics, which, of course, show uh, an increase in uh, uh, the, the requirements there, uh, the Scottish Government works hard with local authorities to ensure uh, that those needs are met. Question two, Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the effectiveness of Police Scotland's strategy for engaging with local communities. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. The Scottish Government has set clear expectations of all public bodies that community engagement is a key part of their function. Uh, local policing and local accountability are fundamental to policing in Scotland. Police Scotland's annual policing plan, which was launched, launched just last week, set out clear examples of the real and vital role they play in our local communities. This includes examples of where our police service work closely with local communities and partners, not only in solving crime, but importantly in preventing it taking place. Police reform has seen an almost 150 per cent increase in the number of local elected members scrutinising the police service across Scotland and shaping local delivery. Across Scotland, around 360 local councillors now attend local policing committees, compared to 146 local councillors prior to the creation of Police Scotland. Local policing and local accountability remain fundamental to policing in Scotland. Each of the 14 Police Scotland command divisions have a local commander who works with the council, communities and local partners to help shape and deliver policing through 353 ward-level policing plans covering every local community in Scotland. Margaret Mitchell. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that very comprehensive answer, but does he recognise and value the excellent prevention work and local intelligence provided by crime prevention panels, and does he agree that the proposal to cut their budgets and remove police officer support at their meetings is a retrograde step? Cabinet Secretary. As I've said out uh, to the member, the, uh, the national uh, annual policing plan sets out a range of measures that the Police Scotland intend to take forward over the course of the next year in working with local uh, partners in making sure that they deliver effective policing. As I've mentioned, a key part of that is around uh, prevention action as well. And I've got no doubt if the member has concerns about the way in which Police Scotland are operating in partnership with some of the local uh, crime prevention bodies, that she'll be more than willing to engage with them directly and how she feels that that could be further improved. But likewise, I'm always uh, open to suggestions from members on how they feel that these matters can be better addressed. But she can be assured that Police Scotland recognise the importance of local engagement and working with other partners within the local community to deliver effective policing within these local communities. Tricia Ferguson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. 
I thank the Minister for the answer he's just given. Uh, in the course of correspondence recently with the Chief Constable, I ascertained that the Chief Constable himself will conduct a review of the opening times of police stations following on from the closure and curtailment of many of those last year. I wonder if the Minister would join me in urging the Chief Constable to ensure that community councils and other community groups are not just able to take part in that consultation, but are positively encouraged to take part in that consultation and to understand that their views are critical in actually understanding the effect these changes have had in local communities. Well, local engagement at Poseidon Office is an important part of policing at a local community level, and I would expect uh, Police Scotland to engage with a range of stakeholders who have an interest in how uh, they operate at a local level. Uh, as the member has uh, stated, she has already engaged with the Chief Constable on this matter. Uh, it may be that the member will also wish to pursue the issue with, uh, with the Scottish Police Authority, who have the oversight function of how our police go about these particular matters and how the Chief Constable uh, handles these particular matters. But I would uh, recognise the points that the member has raised, that it's extremely important that all of those stakeholders who may have a view on these particular issues are given the opportunity to participate in that discussion. And I would encourage the member to continue to support those organisations who may wish to express their view on these matters. Question three, Graham Day. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what guidance it provides local authorities and the purposes for which self-directed support may be used. Minister Murray Mott. Self-directed support is a rights-based approach that enables eligible individuals, their families and carer carers flexibility, choice and control of their care and support in order to meet their health and social care outcomes. The Social Care Self-Directed Support Scotland Act 2013 is accompanied by statutory guidance which was launched in April 2014. This guidance supports local authorities to take an approach where personal needs are assessed as part of a collaborative conversation. If eligibility for support by the local authority is agreed, a care and support plan will be developed that is based on what the person wants to achieve, their personal outcomes. The person also has choice and control over how the care and support is delivered. Graham Day. Uh, thank you. Can I ask the Minister what common sense flexibility can be deployed in this regard? I do so in relation to a situation that a constituent of mine finds themselves in, where they want to use SDS to fund a course in applied behaviour analysis therapy in the hope that will help their child communicate, thereby easing the considerable difficulties the family face, providing respite from those challenges and in turn ensuring the child perhaps has a more productive educational experience than at present. Could such a use of SDS be permissible? Minister. Well, flexibility and creativity are essential to making the best use of support within available budgets. Local authorities provide social care and support to children and families as part of a wider policy and practice framework of getting it right for every child. The local authority has a duty under the Social Care Act 2013 to offer flexibility and choices in relation to a child's care and support. However, the member may wish to direct his constituent, if they have not already done so, to contact the Angus or Dundee Carer Centres for information and support regarding access to self-directed support. Jointly, these organisations have been awarded £143,000 for 2015-16 from the Scottish Government Support in the Right Direction Fund to ensure that people of Scotland have access to high-quality information, support and advocacy services. Question four, Annabelle Goldie. To ask the Scottish Government what progress has been made with the implementation of the Disclosure Scheme for Domestic Abuse Scotland, which was piloted in Aberdeen and Ayrshire. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. The Disclosure Scheme for Domestic Abuse Scotland is currently still being piloted. The six month pilots in Aberdeen and Ayrshire will formally end on Sunday, the 31st of May, and will be independently evaluated by the University of Glasgow. I can confirm that the schemes will continue to operate in Aberdeen and Ayrshire pending the outcome of this evaluation. I am optimistic that the learning from these pilots will support a rollout across Scotland. While the practical uh, implementation of the scheme is for Police Scotland uh, to determine and taking forward, uh, the Scottish Government will of course continue to work with them and to support this work going forward. Annabel Goldie. 
Well, Presiding Officer, these two pilots are very welcome, but in the rest of the United Kingdom, this scheme was rolled out on International Women's Day 2014, bringing huge help and support to potentially vulnerable partners. How soon can we provide the same degree of protection to potential victims across the whole of Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm sure the member would recognise it was important to make sure that we had a scheme which was fit for purpose and suitable to the Scottish justice system, which is why the two pilots were established in the first place and why the independent evaluation is also going to be uh, taking place to assess their effectiveness. As I said, I'm optimistic about being able to take it forward on a national basis, and the Chief Constable has also stated that he's optimistic and be able to do that once they have the findings from uh, the independent evaluation and for that to be taken forward on a quick basis. So I can assure the member that we are keen to see this project and these pilots being taken forward on a national basis, but once we have the evaluation, we'll then be able to determine the final timescale for that to be taken forward. Question five, Stuart Stevenson. To ask the Scottish Government what progress is being made with North Connect's £2 billion power scheme between Aberdeenshire and Scandinavia. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding Officer, an application for planning permission has been made by North Connect KS to Aberdeenshire Council, which relates to a converter station for the proposed link to Norway. The application was received by the Council on the 14th of April, and a public consultation will run until the 21st of May. It would not be appropriate to comment on a live planning application. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. And within the limitations of a live planning application, uh, does the Minister welcome uh, that this will draw significantly on green energy developments both in Scotland and Norway, and that we will need to see similar cross country initiatives if we're going to meet electricity demand in Scotland? And we should be encouraging more investment in renewable energy projects. Cabinet Secretary. On the policy questions that Mr Stevenson raises, um, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, there is a necessity for us uh, to uh, increase interconnection and transmission upgrade activity. Um, that is a, a, a generic process which is inherent in changing the sources of uh, power generation upon which we rely. Uh, the Government has taken forward a number of sustained investments in the renewable energy sector and taken the policy initiatives to enable the renewable energy sector to thrive within Scotland, and we look forward to taking policy decisions which enable us uh, to continue that activity in the years to come. Question six, Alex Rowley. President officer, to ask the Scottish Government how many complaints Police Scotland has received from Fife residents regarding police response and call-out times since services were moved from the Fife Control Centre to Bilson Glen. Cabinet Secretary, Michael Matheson. As a member is aware, the Police Scotland review of contact command and control across the country has been ongoing since early last year. This has been a phased approach, with the latest stage being the transfer of operation from Glenrothes to Bilston Glen in March. Police Scotland have been engaged with local authorities, local partnerships and unions on the impact of the change. Issues surrounding performance at the Bilston Glen Control Centre have been raised previously in this chamber and the First Minister committed to looking into these matters. This has been done and both Police Scotland and the Scottish Police Authority have taken direct action to address any issues surrounding the operation at Bilston Glen. I have also met with Police Scotland and I have been given assurance that the situation at Bilston Glen is now much improved and that appropriate steps have been taken to ensure that the public continue to receive a high-quality service. Alex Rowley. I thank the Minister for his answer. Some three weeks ago in my constituency in the town of Cowan Beath, a group of pensioners um, were terrified in their own homes as a result of antisocial behaviour when they called the Bilston Glen Centre and reported that, amongst other uh, things that were happening. A wheelie bin had been set on fire. They were told the police don't put out fires. It turned out, and it's now been confirmed, that actually the, it was regrettable, the Chief of Superintendent says, that calls received at police control room had not been logged correctly and local officers were not dispatched. The police never came. Is that acceptable? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, in short, no, it's not acceptable, and Police Scotland recognise there have been some challenges around Bilston Glen. That's why they've taken robust action in order to address these particular issues, and that's why I'm receiving reports on a weekly basis now from Police Scotland around the performance at Bilston Glen. I want to make sure that the public can be reassured 
that when they make a call to 101, that they get the type of response and service that they should expect to receive from Police Scotland. And the measures that Police Scotland are now putting in place will help to ensure that. And from the recent information I've received from Police Scotland, there's a clear level of improvement being achieved in that. But I can assure the member that robust measures are being taken in order to address any of the types of issues that his own constituents have experienced. Question 7, Michael Russell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Scottish Government what progress it's making in ensuring that the ambulance and health services on the island of Mull meet the needs and expectations of the local community, as expressed to the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Wellbeing and Sport at a meeting in March 2015? Cabinet Secretary, Jonah Robertson. The Scottish Government are facilitating engagement between NHS Highland and the Scottish Ambulance Service to ensure the healthcare needs of the Mull community are met. Both boards were encouraged during the meeting to work together in designing a multidisciplinary approach and designing a sustainable solution for the community. Michael Russell. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. She is aware, as indeed her predecessor was at a previous meeting in October, there is deep dissatisfaction on Mull with the Scottish Ambulance Service and the fact that there have been commitments entered into that haven't been met is immensely regrettable. Will the Minister agree to meet with me and the community again to make sure that whilst the progress that Highland Health Board has made and the encouragement that she has given for further progress to both boards is extremely valuable, the Scottish Ambulance Service has not yet come up to the mark. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I, first of all, I recognise the, the concerns that Mike Russell outlines. The, the Scottish Ambulance Service is currently working on an options appraisal and is working with the Community Council to develop this. The Ambulance Service are planning for community engagements to be carried out at the end of this month to discuss the options. They are currently in the process of finalising dates, but anticipate that the options appraisal uh, it should take place in July. Officials are being kept up to date on this process, who are in turn uh, keeping me up to date and are in regular communication with the Ambulance Service to ensure that the work is progressing. But um, in answer to Mike Russell uh, directly, I am happy to meet with him and uh, others as he sees uh, fit to uh, discuss the outcomes uh, of the option appraisal process. Question 8, Linda Fabiani. To ask the Scottish Government when its review of out of hours primary care services will be published. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. A national review of primary care out of hours services was announced on the 30th of January uh, by myself. Uh, Professor Sir Lewis Ritchie is leading the review and has been asked to report recommendations to me by the end of September. Linda Fabiani. Um, I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. And can I ask her her view of how local health boards' own consultations on out of our services will complement the national strategy and place concern in East Kilbride, Scotland's largest town, on the record uh, that uh, the local health board is considering taking any out of our services away from East Kilbride? Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I say to Linda Fabiani that the, the National Review for Primary Care Out of Hours Services will report recommendations designed to reflect the, the findings of the, of the review in recognition that responsibility for design, implementation and management of out of hours services ultimately remains the responsibility of NHS health boards. Recommendations will be in the form of guidance. However, I would expect any proposals for redesign of out of hours services from any board to be in line with that guidance. Question 9, Drew Smith. I thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether Barnet consequentials arising from a mansion tax could help the NHS in Scotland meet its waiting time guarantee. Secretary, this Robinson. government has passed on health resource consequentials in full since 2010-11 and allocates funding in line with its priorities. Additional consequentials will be dealt with in this way. We have committed to increasing the revenue budget of our NHS in real terms for the remainder of this parliament and for each and every year of the next parliament too. Bruce Smith. Uh, thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for that response, President Officer. Of course, the Scottish Government's central uh, uh, policy at this election is to end uh, the provision of consequentials due to their policy of full uh, fiscal autonomy, ending the pooling and sharing uh, of resources and scrapping um, the Barnet formula. It is the most aggressive example of nationalism. Mr Smith, can I get it, a question? Most it is the most aggressive example of nationalism in this campaign, the SNP's policy to question. cut off our noses to spite our face. Cabinet Secretary. 
Well, uh, can I say to Drew Smith, in the gentlest of terms, let, let's quote the, the IFS, because I know that uh, Drew Smith and the Labour Party like to quote the IFS. So look what the, listen to what the IFS analysis of the manifestos have concluded. They've concluded that real spending on the NHS in England in 2019-20 compared to 2014-50 would be £8.7 billion higher under the SNP plans. Yay. So it's very clear, presiding officer, if Scots want the NHS to have the money they need for the NHS, then they have to vote SNP tomorrow to deliver it. Yeah. We now move to First Minister's question.